So what I'm going to show you in this video is how to actually get documents into a SharePoint team site document library. Now we've navigated to our SharePoint team site here and again the way that we get to our document library in this case called documents is simply select the link from the quick launch menu on the left. You'll see that we have our document library there are no documents in there currently and we have our familiar ribbon across the top we have our view and again we have our details pane here over on the right. Now the very first way that we can get documents into a document library is to create them using the tools available in the library. So we go up to new and we can go in and create a Word document. Now what that's going to do, it's going to launch us into Word Online. It is then going to also put the document into edit mode. You can see the familiar ribbon across the top. So what we can do is we can start typing in and creating our document. You'll see up the top here it indicates that it is uh, saving in the background for us. We need to wait for that to complete. So it takes a little bit longer the first time it saves because it's actually creating the document in the library. Now with that done, I can go back to my uh, demo site and my document library and we'll see that we have a document already in there. Now we can select this, we can for example go into our information pane over here on the right and again what we could do is we want we could go in and uh, change the uh, name of that document. Okay, so again save that, you'll see that this will update for us and we then have that information. So again, using um, the uh, new option here, we can create a Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, and an Excel survey, as well as a new folder. So again, if we want to create a folder in here, we simply go in and enter the details for the folder and it will create a subfolder for us. The second way to get documents into our uh, document library here is to select the upload. So what we can do now is we select upload, we can go in and for example target just a single file here. So it's going to upload the single file, you'll see that we get information about that file. That file is then basically uh, uploaded directly for us. So a, a nice simple way to get a single file into our library from our local PC. Now depending on the browser that we're using, in this case we're going to pop across and use Chrome, you'll see that under Upload we also get not only the ability to upload files, but we can also upload individual folders. So what I'm going to do is basically drill into this and find a folder that I wish to upload. So I select that, you'll see that it's uploading those six items over here. We get a progress bar over here and obviously one of the things that is important in this process to understand is that the transfer speeds are very much dependent on your broadband link and the uplink speed that you have to the internet. So here we see we've uploaded our data folder, we drill into it, that has exactly the same file. So again, depending on the browser that you are using in your environment and the version, you may also have the ability to upload not only files but also folders. Another way that we can move data into here is we can drag it directly into the browser. So what I'll do here is, for example, I'll go in here and I'll select these two documents. And then what I'm going to do is simply drag those documents onto the browser window. As you can see here, uh, the browser window changes. Let it go. And you'll see again that it is now uploading those two items. So the next way is to drag and drop directly onto the browser window. So again, we can create new files, we can upload individual files and folders, we can then also drag directly from our Windows Explorer onto the browser window to upload the files. Now, another way to do this is to install the sync client. So what I can do here is I can install a free piece of software that will synchronize the information from my um, document library directly into my Windows Explorer on my local machine. So in this case, you'll see uh, what I've got here is I have a link here. So this is already uh, synchronizing information. So if I drill into uh, that, you should see that what is displayed is the a list of the documents once that synchronization is complete. So I'll give that a minute, obviously, you'll see those documents are now synchronized, come down, little green check mark indicates that that has been done successfully. So what I'll do is I will go back to uh, this environment. So what I'll do is, for example, take these last three files, I will copy those, and I will go into my synchronized location. 
and then what I'm going to do is simply paste those in there. Okay, so I've added these three documents, Demo, Demo, and Office 365 Pricing. What we'll see in a minute is that they will start synchronizing the little blue arrows, and then once that has complete, uh, we'll get a green check mark indicating that has completed. Now, if we go back to our document library and refresh the page, what we will see is, an, again, an exact mirror of what we have here. So with the synchronization client, I'm able to create a local copy, a local cache of the files that are in my document library. So anything that I drag into this location will then be synchronized up to the library. Likewise, anything that I put into the library will also be synchronized back down to the desktop. So I can work quite happily with the documents offline here. So in summary, we've taken a standard document library. What we've done is shown you that you can create a new Office document directly in there. You can also upload individual files as well as folders now, depending on the browser that you are using. You can then also uh, drag and drop files directly from your Windows Explorer into the browser and they will then update and the final option is to install the synchronization software and then basically set up the synchronization using the sync button between the document library and your local desktop. Therefore, any files that appear in either location are then synchronized so that they are identical. So now that we've got our documents into our document library again, what we can do here is change the tiles. We can, uh, for example, you know, look at the views. We can add additional columns. We can go in, for example, as I mentioned, and select individual files and look at their properties. Uh, thanks to the details pane over here on the right, we can change their permissions and work on them. You'll see that we can also open them, share them, get a link and download, as well as a number of additional options if we so choose. So again, this really gives us a lot of flexibility when it comes to managing files far more than we had with traditional uh, network file shares.